Hey there, Dengar Stu here. Today's video is about diagnosing an outboard that won't crank and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. There's quite a few reasons that an outboard won't crank or turn over. So in this video, we're not talking about an outboard that you can hear cranking but won't start. We're talking about one where you turn the key and the starter mode doesn't turn at all. The sort of impetus of this video came from a problem Dave was having, so let's head down and look at that first, then we'll go through a bit more of the theory. All right, let's head down the hill, go see Dave, and see if we can figure out what's going on with this uh, outboard. All electrical circuits start and end with the battery, so Dave's already charged the battery up to make sure that's not the problem, always the first thing to check. Uh, then after that, we're gonna look at connections, going to the starter, and work our way onwards. Renko sitting nicely. Here's Dave's boat in the slipway, Kev's giving him a hand too. So let's head over there and have a look. Oh, here's Eddie. Eddie. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Eddie. Oh, long time no see. How are you been? <laughs> yes, it's good to see you too. Let's go fix a boat, hey? <laughs> so, battery's on charge, and it has been for a while, hasn't it, Pedals? And you've tried a second battery too. Yeah, we've tried yeah, several. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we just put a second battery on. We've had it, we've had nothing, and it's, we've just pulled this isolation switch out, and. Ah, uh, yep. So, uh, was that one? Could be anything along the way, couldn't it? All those terminals, though. One thing the guys did recently was put um, starter cables or jumper leads from the battery straight to the starter, and it worked. So it's obviously something in between. We're letting our battery back on. Yeah, let's put it back on the battery. <clears throat> So if it still doesn't crank, it's probably in your switch. This yes. is just your negative so far? This is just the negative. Okay. As soon as we started tampering with it, the motor started clicking away and we said, There's something in there. Something. Yeah, if you give it a wriggle and you're like, yeah, I'm getting life. That's right. Okay. Do you want me to crank it, pedals? Yes, please. <sighs> Nothing. Is it turned on? I don't know. Battery switch. I said that was turned on. Have we got any electricity going to the... We had no, something going nothing to the on switch. the dash. It moved down the fuel gauge. No, it's not even dash lights at the moment. What about now? No. No? Oh. Okay, that's on. Uh, I just saw the, the gauge. Flicker. Flicker. Yeah. Maybe dodgy battery switch, isolator. Yeah. Battery, it might be an interesting experiment. That, like that? Yeah, just across the two. It doesn't matter which way? No. And then if I crank it... Onto the terminals or...? Yeah, or just touch the... No, just the two terminals. Okay. Okay. And what's that saying? 13. So it sounds like all your voltage is dropping across the so battery it's switch. At the moment. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting a negative through it. Let's so that it. should be close to zero. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> really? Yeah, well, yeah. What, it's how much... You, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the other side is really the other half of the motor. It's yeah. gone all the way through the motor, starter motor, into the negative, back to the battery. Oh. Yeah. So and you lost all of it across your switch. You lost all of it across the switch. <laughs> yeah. It's open circuit at the moment. Yeah. So take him to bits. I've got another yeah. battery switch up there if it fails. <laughs> Do we need a battery switch? Yep. Yes, it's a good idea to have. Yeah. This is good. But at least if you tape and put them together and tape it up so it can't oh, yeah. touch the hull, then at least you can use the boat while you get one. Sometimes when a connection is bad, it's not completely broken. It just has a really high resistance, i.e. it's a very bad connection, not a broken connection. And that does two things. It causes a voltage drop across the connection and it causes the current, the amount of current flowing to be greatly reduced. You can kind of think of it as like a, a really blocked hose sort of idea, like a blocked artery, that kind of thing. What we'll do now is we'll go to the bench behind me and I'll give you a real world example of the effect that has and how you can check for it. Here we can see we've got direct connections. Don't worry too much about the details. Take my word for it. Little motor's running fine. Now I'm gonna take this connection out and replace it with a resistor. Let's try 22 ohms. 
It's running though, but it's definitely running slower. What I'm going to do now is measure the voltage across this resistor. I'll show you why in a moment. It'll make more sense when you see the diagram, but let's see what it says. It's telling me here that about 1.82 volts is dropping across the resistor. This is a 5 volt circuit, so we know that only 3.2 volts is left to run the motor, plus the greatly reduced current due to the resistance as well. Now what's interesting about this when it comes to a diagnosis point of view, if I disconnect my motor and then I measure the voltage on my positive and negative pins, I see here 5 volts. Sorry, minus 5 because I got them around the wrong way, but you know, nearest makes no difference, 5 volts coming in. Now I might look at that and think, what's the problem? I've got 5 volts. Okay, imagine it's a boat, so it's 12 volts, but you go, I've got 12.8 volts coming to the starter motor, it should be fine. If we plug our motor back in, take the high resistance join out and put very low resistance join in, then I go and measure across the join. This is what we were doing across Dave's battery switch. And you can see when I do, we're seeing basically zero volts. And that's what you would expect to see in the bulk of the circuit other than across the actual motor itself. If I measure across the motor itself, I'm seeing 4.5 volts. Let me show you here. There we go. 4.6 volts. We're seeing that by far the lion's share of our 5 volts is being consumed by the motor. And that's what we want. I'll talk to you with one more diagram just to explain what was going on there and then we'll wrap up. We've got our battery. Our circuit on the boat starts and ends of the battery. Then if we have our positive circuit come out, we're going to keep it really simple. Then we're going to say we have a, let's say a battery switch like Dave had. So there's our battery switch, then our power comes out and we go to starter motor, nothing special, we're going to keep it really simple, no, um, you know, no solenoids or anything like that. Then we got this motor, little pinion, and then we finally come back on the negative side to our battery. When you measure voltage, you measure across two points in parallel. And when you measure current, you measure in series. So I'll show you what that means. If I had my negative here and I sort of broke it, I could come in here. Obviously you tend to break it at the terminal, not there. I could put a meter in here and then continue on and I can see how much current is flowing through the wire. When I measure voltage, I pick two points in my circuit and it'll tell me how much the voltage drops across this circuit. We know that the voltage has, so say the, volt, the battery currently has, say 12.5 volts in it. I know that the voltage has to drop. If I measure my circuit from here to here, I'm going to read 12.5 dropping across the battery. But if I measure it across this switch, I'm only going to see what proportion of that 12.5 drops in this part of the circuit. I could measure it here to here and see how much of the voltage drops across the actual starter motor. I could measure it here to here and see how much voltage drops across the input of the battery switch to the output of the starter motor. So voltage is between two points in the circuit and amps is how much is flowing through the circuit. Doesn't matter where I cut it, if I put my meter in, amps is always the same. It's how much current is flowing through the circuit, and that's a product of the total resistance in the circuit. All right, I'm going to clean this mess. I don't know, maybe we could make something out of it. Maybe this guy could have a hat and arms. No, let's push on. If I measured across the battery switch, I would hope to see zero volts. And because V equals IR, what this formula tells us, Ohm's law, is that we get voltage drops in proportion to resistance. So if we have 500 ohms of resistance in our switch and 500 ohms of resistance in our, that's not really a good 500, is it? Uh, in our starter motor, then we're going to see 6.4 volts drop across the switch and 6.4 volts drop across the starter motor. And obviously 6.4 volts isn't enough to run a 12 volt motor not to mention the extra resistance causing, you know, less current to flow. 
So if ever I was to measure voltage across my switch by putting one probe of the meter here, one probe here, and saw six volts while I was you know, cranking the motor, i.e. activating the solenoid, I would know that a huge resistance is here. And this can be easier and more accurate than measuring the resistance of the switch directly. So if conversely I see zero volts here, there's a pretty good chance that 12 volts or 12.8 is coming across the starter motor. And the best way to measure that is just measure voltage across your starter motor. If I see 12.6, I know that 0.2 of a volt is dropping around the whole rest of the circuit. All of this combined is giving me a small voltage drop. It's all going to the starter motor, which means I've probably got good current flow and a good voltage. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is sort of what I showed you at the bench, but I'm hoping it kind of makes sense when you see it because, uh, you know, it's really, one of the most common kind of rookie mistakes, I think, when it comes to trying to test a circuit with a multimeter, if people don't understand really what's going on. Imagine we now have this circuit and it has 5,000 ohms of resistance. It's a really bad battery switch, it's corroded, it's on its way out. Why did I draw that? Let's call it 5,000 K, normally just say 5 K. Anyway, um, if I then put my multimeter here and here, I'm measuring the drop across the whole circuit. So I will see 12.8. And I'll think, hooray, everything's fine. I'm getting full voltage to here. The reality is that there's very little resistance in this wire, very little resistance in this wire, very little resistance here, it doesn't matter. All of those 12 volts is dropping across here. If you, if you measure the start of the circuit and the end of the circuit, you're always gonna see battery voltage. Seeing battery voltage at the end of the two wires is in no way confirmation that you have a good circuit that's a low resistance circuit. Don't get disheartened if you don't get it all straight away, but I will say it's kind of, it's, it's not that complicated. You know, I definitely think it's within the grasp of anybody reasonably mechanically minded to understand. You've got a certain amount of voltage to start with. It's the maximum voltage the battery can supply and it will slowly get used up throughout the circuit. What's really important to you is, is the starter motor using it all or are other parts of the circuit using it, like your battery switch, where it's not doing any good and they're using it because they've got high resistance, corrosion, thin wires, you know, a failure at some point. So it's a really good way to diagnose this problem. I think a lot of people have a bit of a fear about electricity because you can't see it, you know, but you've got the multimeter. It's kind of the equivalent of squatting over a hand mirror. You know, you've got this ability to see something using a bit of equipment. So I think, you know, getting over the fact that it's invisible is a really good mental leap towards understanding this sort of, you know, this sort of diagnosis technique. All the middle, you've got to get all the fire. Yeah, clean yeah. them first too, yeah. So here's all going on. Yeah, so just from two posts to one post. Yeah. And then get, get that nice and you get that a bit straighter. Yeah, that's it. Well, look, okay. look at that. We've got dials now. Oh, straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Bad battery switch. There you go, pedals. Fixed. I'll have a six pack. Kevin will have a new Ferrari, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Can I pay you in um... coffee? coffee? Yes. I want you to remember it work. <laughs> that even though it had a house sticker on, it's actually a starting battery. Mm. New to you. Oh. Who's a lucky boy? Yes. Back up too. So you knew what it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> now the dust has settled on Dave's actual problem, let's have a look at some of the other things it could have been. I would always say flat battery is kind of number one. Sometimes if it's got, you know, 11 volts or whatever, you'll crank it and you'll hear it crank really slowly. You can pretty much guarantee it's battery or bad brushes in the starter, but most likely battery. Start there. Another really common one is if you haven't sort of gone right and neutral, you turn the key, nothing's going to happen because it's got starting gear protection, so it won't start in gear. So that's probably something I'd check maybe even before the battery. Am I in neutral? 
here you can see we've got three fuses and they're labeled down here so what have we got this middle fuse here is labeled main switch and with this one out we've got no forward controls either so that's sending power up to the key switch and the trim tilt switch so completely no start no click of the solenoid nothing like that check the fuse as well on this outboard these are spare fuses the top ones the actual fuse and these are your spares go for it yeah so here you can hear this relay clicking but this fuse is between the relay and the solenoid uh, so it's so there's power to the relays there, yeah. but not power from the relay to the solenoid. Oh, okay, so it goes to the black box yeah. and stops. It stops, yep. Okay, so this fuse is power up to the forward controls to the key switch. And then this fuse seems to protect from this relay to here. The clicking you can hear is this relay, not a solenoid click. If we had this one clicking and the starter motor wasn't going, you'd suspect a bad starter motor. The best way to figure out what is clicking is just to put your finger on it. I could feel that quite clearly that was clicking was coming from here, not from here. Another thing I used to have really common on my old Tatsu is that this Bendix gear would come and connect with the flywheel and wouldn't drop down again. It would just stay up there and you actually had to tap it down with a little hammer or something. Got a video on that particular problem and also spinning and not rising. The other thing I check, worst case scenario, is is the engine seized? You know, I can turn this with my hand so it's not seized. but. If the starter's engaging and it's not turning over, it may actually be a seized engine as well. So two more things to check. Well, thanks for watching. I hope it made sense. Um, even if just a little bit of it made sense, even if you just got a slightly, slightly better understanding, you know, these things happen over time. You don't always get it straight away. Um, but the big things I would check, even without the multimeter is, well, is my battery charged, i.e., you know, battery tester, whatever. Uh, is the fuse blown? Uh, in Dave's boat, there was even two fuses, one sending power to the forward controls, one after the relay. Are the fuses good? Is the boat in neutral? Is the Bendix gear stuck on the flywheel? There's a whole lot of things you can check yourself, even without getting into the finer points of Ohm's Law. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you when I find time. Sorry I don't have much these days, but I'll, I'll definitely make videos when I can. See ya. Good morning. Are you molting Daffy or are you going grey? I think you're molting. You're just showing off, aren't you, Daisy, that your legs work and Daffy's don't. Poor Daffy. All right, enjoy your seed. Nothing like a drink of water after breakfast.